panggabing gawain para sa Panginoon. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Habang hinihintay pa natin ang iba, awitin natin yung nagsasabing home. Kung saan naghihintay tayo ng isang tahanan ng Panginoon ay may likha. Praise God. Sabay na ako ng mga choir, backup singers natin. unto me bago tayo manalangin habang pinaghahanda ko ang ating kapatid si Bar Joel para buksan sa panalangin ng ating gawain be it unto me according to your words Amen Thank you Jesus Curve upon my heart The truth that sets me free According to your word, O oh Lord Be done to me Pustansa. You promise your word will deliver Lord, we believe Amen. You promise us joy like a river. Lord, we receive it from you. These things you have spoken in your bringing to pass. This word is appearing, but your word will last. Be it unto me, oh, be it to me, according to your word, according to your promises, I can stand secure. Carb upon my heart The truth that sets me free According to your word, O oh Lord Be done to me For the last time, be done to me Amen oh, Be done to me According to your word According to your promises, I can stand secure. Carve upon my heart, carve upon my heart, the truth that sets me free. Yes, Lord. 
According to your word, O oh Lord, be done to me. According to your word, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. According to your word, O oh Lord, be done to me. Palapakatan, Panginoon. Amen. Mark Joel, praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen, Lord. Ay, madalangin tayong lahat ngayon ko. Ama namin, Diyos, pinupuri ka namin, Lord, sa gabing ito. Kaya mo, Lord, mapapurihan ang iyong pangalan. Madakila ka, Lord God, sa buhay ng iyong mga anak, Panginoon, sa pagkakataong ito, Ama. At ayaw mo yung presensya ay, Lord, ay pumarito na wa, Panginoon. At Lord, doon sa Espiritu ng Pananambahan, Panginoon, lahat kami ay makapasok doon, Panginoon. Makabreak namin ang atmosphere, Panginoon, ng Pananambahan, Panginoon. May you anoint, Lord God, the, the MC, the song leader, Lord Jesus. Igit sa lahat, Panginoon, ang tagapagpahayag, Lord, ang iyong salita, Panginoon. Give him the double portion, Panginoon. At Lord, tulad ng amin narinig kayo na umaga, Panginoon, hindi kami nanginain sa tao, Panginoon. Ba't nanginain kami sa iyo mismo, Panginoon, Ama. Salamat po sa iyo na marami, Panginoon, namin kinukumit. Uh, mula sa umpisang ka sa matapos, Lord, ang gawain ito, Panginoon. At sa katapos-taposan, Lord, ay aming ibabalik sa iyo lahat ang kapurin mo. Pasalamat. Purihin ka, sambahin ka, Panginoon. We appreciate you, Panginoon, and we love you. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. At kamay natin ng bawat isa. Amen. Habang inaawit natin, standing in the promises of God. Amen. Praise God. Gandang gabi sa bawat isa. Hallelujah. Amen. Standing on the promises of Christ, my King. Through eternal ages, let His graces me. Glory in the highest heaven shall be. Amen. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, and standing on the promises of God. Promises that cannot fail When the holy storm of doubt and fear has seen By the living word of God I shall prevail He's Standing on the promises of God Standing! Hallelujah! He's standing! He's standing! He's standing on the promises of God my Savior Standing, he's standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. He's standing on the promises I now can see. Perfect present cleansing in the blood for me. He's standing in the liberty where Christ makes me. Standing on the promises of God He's standing, He's standing He's standing on the promises of God my Savior He's standing, He's standing I'm standing on the promises of God He's standing on the promises of Christ the Lord Bound to Him eternally by love strong God Overcoming, overcoming daily with a spirit soul He's standing on the promises of God Standing, standing, He's standing, He's standing, Amen He's standing on the promises of God, my Savior. He's standing, he's standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. Last stanza. He's standing on the promises I cannot fall. Listening every moment to the Spirit's call. Hallelujah. Resting in my Savior as my all and all is standing on the promises of God. He's standing, he's standing, he's standing on the promises of God, my Savior. He's standing, yes, Lord, he's standing. 
I'm standing up the promises of God. Last stanza for the last time. He's standing on the promises. I cannot fall in the Lord. Listening every moment to the Spirit's call. Yes, Lord. Resting in my Savior as my all and all. He's standing on the promises of God. He's standing, he's standing. He's standing. He's standing, he's standing on the promises of God, my Savior. He's standing, he's standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. He's standing, he's standing, amen. He's standing, he's standing. He's standing on the promises of God, my Savior. He's standing, he's standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. I'm standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Salamat sa pangako ng ating Panginoon. Amen. Yan ang ating pinangahawakan at patuloy na pinanampalatayanan. Amen. Totoo yan sa buhay natin, mga kapatid? Amen. Kaya ang sabi natin, point of no return, Lord. Praise God. Awitin natin. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, sa kabila ng mga failure natin. Amen. So, Lord, palagi na dyan. We can say, Lord, we don't want to return. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. When I think of what the Lord has done for me Isipin natin siya, hallelujah, amen Fully prepared so I could walk in victory Hallelujah Since I've touched the cross and felt the pain He bore Forsaking all my life before I've set out for heaven's shore To go with Him all the way Never to return again To yesterday Yes, Jesus, hallelujah Oh, I can turn back on Him I've turned away from sea I walk with Him every day There's just no other way Well, we just behind me burn Yes, Lord, hallelujah Amen, Lord I've reached the point of no return Having put my hand to the blow I won't look back Nothing behind could ever match what I have. Yes, Lord. The Savior now that I have come to know has everything I need to grow. Oh, has everything I need to grow. To whom shall we go? Don't ever want apart. Cause it's true that Jesus has won my heart Yes, Jesus Oh, I can turn back on Him Purihin natin siya, hallelujah I turn away from sea I walk with Him every day There's just no other way While we just behind me burn Pressing ahead will be my end. I've reached the point of no return. Last verse. Last verse. Put my hand to the blow. I won't look back. Toto ba yan, mga patid? Being behind could ever match what now I have. Yes, Lord. 
the Savior now that I have come to know has everything I need to go to whom shall we go don't ever want a part cause it's true that Jesus he has won my heart I can turn back on him hallelujah I can turn back on him yes Lord I'm turned away from sin I walk with Him every day There's just no other way While reaches behind me burn Pressing ahead will be my end Yes, Lord I've reached the point of no return For For rich or for poor and in hand for better for worse Lord I give you all of myself to have and to hold to cherish in my heart about every death can never part hallelujah I can turn back on him oh I can turn back on Him I've turned away from sin Yes, Lord I walk with Him every day There's just no other way Thank you, Lord While bridges behind me burn Pressing ahead will be my end I've reached the point of no return I've reached the point of no return Hallelujah I've reached the point of no return Palapakan natin ating Panginoon Hallelujah Thank you Lord Jesus Salamat sa biyaya mo Panginoon Amen Thank you Lord Jesus Hallelujah Hallelujah Praise God Amen Kayo mga kapuna mga kapatid Amen Thank you, Lord. Salamat sa mga awiting yan. Hallelujah. Amen. Tayo dumako na po, mga kapatid, sa handog awit sa Panginoon. Praise God. Akin na pong... Amen. Uh, Nanyayahan ang ladies' department para sa, sa kanilang song offering ngayong gabi. Amen. Palapaan natin minsan pa ang ating Panginoon. Amen. Praise God.
God be the glory. Amen. Thank you, ladies department. Praise God at kayo po, tinatawagan ko ang song offering ng quartet. Praise God. Acapella. Praise God. Cleanser of the mess I made upon the hill, a place is strained. Stretch on across your body, crush by human hands, you fall from dust. How sa witing yan. Amen. Dagdagan yung lamig ng aircon sa lamig ng boses nila, mga kapatid. Amen. Sigad, so medyo kulo na yung time natin pero mainit na mainit siguro tong testimony. Bigyan natin sila ng 2 to 3 minutes para ibahagi ang kanyang testimony sa Panginoon. Amen. Sister Letty Villamor. Sigad.
Uh, magandang gabi po sa inyo lahat. Uh, uh, nais ko lang po ibalik ang, pat- ang pasalamat sa Panginoon. At uh, salamat po ako sa Kanya dahil sa pamagitan ng mga uh, mensahe ay nahubog ako ng gusto. Uh, nung last Friday po, ang patutuo ko dahil natuwa po ako dahil sa aming Lady Squire na nagpatawag ng, ng emergency meeting. Uh, ang puso ko po ay nagagalak dahil alam ko na maibalik na namin ang aming choir practice kina Sister Odette. And that time, nalit po ako nagdating. So, wala po ako alam sa mga anong, ano nila. So, pag upo ko po, nagumpisa ng aming meeting, ako pala po ang punterya nagkaaway. So, nagulat ako. Sabi ko, Lord, uh, uh, temperance ko. Sabi ko, pagganahin mo ng gusto. At natapos po yung aming meeting na yon no reaction. At pinatawa lang pang meeting dahil ako lang ang punterya. Praise the Lord. So, yung meeting na yan about sa kanta namin na Jesus Hold My Hand, that is palpak, sabi nila. Pero para sa akin, kaluba ni Lord John Because that time, na si Sister Odette pala ay may karamdaman. minsan. Ang, ang, ang ano namin ngayon, sabi sa amin Sister Lourdes na huwag na natin kantahin dahil wala Sister Odette, hindi magiging buo ang boses. Pero in my part, I do my part as a base. Sabi ko, at buong puso ko, malinis ang puso ko. At ang patakaran ko sa pag-awit na yan, ano man ang kar- kalabasan ng kanta na yan, maganda o ma- mapangit sa Panginoon yan. Hindi ko hinahandog sa tao yan. That time, umuwi ako, Lord, asan ba ako nagkamali noon? Dahil ako ang sinasabi nila, dahil pinilit ko talaga sila na kumanta. Pero in my, sa puso ko, bakit nga ba? Sabi ni Mr. Lourdes, huwag natin kakantahin dahil kulang tayo, wala tayong soprano. Sabi ko, na, sabi ko sa isip ko lang, bakit? Wala ba Sister Lourdes? Odette, hindi na tayo kakanta. At saka na kayo, uniforme po kami, nakatayo na kami da, kumbaga sa labanan. nakapukos na kami sa kaway. So, nag, ano ako, sabi ko, pasensya na brada, uh, noong time na umuwi ako, hindi ako makatulog, na pray ako, Lord, kasi, what, the time na mayroon akong nagawang kasalanan, nilulot ko sa Panginoon at tiningi ko ng sorry at kinabukasan, answer prayer dahil sa mga preaching, hindi ko na kailangan kausapin si Pastor Rey dahil nasa preaching na. So, sa pagsunod ko, ay gano'n na lang. Na time na, uh, di ko pala alam, nandun lang ako sa harap ng aking makina. Nagising ako, nakasubsob, pero na time na, parang hindi ko alam kung vision yun or panaginip. Napak- nakita ko na, hindi ko alam na no, Sister Lourdes na gano'n na, n- nag-struggle na kaming mga choir kasi galit na sila sa akin. Bakit nyo kinanta doon, struggle? At saka, na nagumani po kami noon ng ano ng talagang hindi maganda. So that time nakita ko na kumakanta kami ng Jesus Old My Hand pero nakita ko na napakaganda ng tugtog. At saka may nakita akong malaking kamay hinuha si Sister Odette. Yung pala that time ni Sister Odette kailangan ni Sister Odette ang malabang kamay ni Lord Jesus. Kaya pala namin kinanta yun. So Lord, sabi ko, anong mali ko doon? Ang mali ko lang. Pinilit ko silang kumanta dahil ano, sabi nila palpak. Ang puso ko ay eh, okay yun, sabi ko Lord sa kanila. And sabi ko, pinakita pa sa akin ng Panginoon na para kami, Lord, sabi ko talaga naman pong, mga parang bata kami, tatanda na namin, umaaksyon pa kami ng parang bata. Sabi ko, Lord, sabi mo sa amin kung ano ang pagkukula namin, kasi sabi niya, hindi na kami nagpa-practice kina Sister Odette, doon na kami kina Brother Rappi, tsaka hindi na talaga kami nagpa-practice dito sa church. Ang patakaran ko, pag hindi ako mag-practice sa church, hindi ako kakanta sa sali sa choir. So, isa pala yun, na nagagalit sila sa akin. Sabi ko, Ikalang naman natin ang mga musician. Tatayo na lang tayo dyan. Basta na lang nila kakapain ang kanta natin. Galit sila sa akin. Ayaw nila na ganun. Basta kakanta. Maganda naman daw. Sabi ko, sige, go. Yun pala, sabi. Yun sa panaginip ko, kita nga, na, pinakita sa akin ng Panginoon Lord. Sabi ko, karapat dapat pa ba itong choir na to? Tapos ngayon, pinakita sa akin ng Panginoon nung umpisa pa lang ng choir na yan. 
Wala pa kaming alam, hindi pa kami kakamasama namin si Brother Naimi. Hahayo kami, kakanta kami sa may sakit, gumagaling yung, yung cancer, gumagaling yung hindi makabangon, nakakabangon. So sabi niya, dyan po kayo, hinawakan, sinamahan. And then sabi niya, nakapukos lang kayo sa ano, para, para bagang nakita ko parang battle. Nando na kami nakaumang, tapos nakita namin na mas mataas ang kaaming kalaban. Sabi ni Lord, mas malaki ako ka dyan, mas higit ako dyan na nasa inyo. Bakit kayo umatras? Tapos hawak-hawak ni Sister Odette sa kanyang kamay. Ito, sabi niya yung kapatid niyo, sabi niya, naghawak kamay na ba kayo para manalangin para sa kanya? Dinalaw niyo na ba siya? For sure talagang hindi. Totoo po yun. Pero in my part, sabi sa akin ni Sister Jane, dalawin naman natin si Sister Odette. Pero ako talaga busy ako sa bahay dahil may alaga akong bata. Every time sa gabi sa pagtulog ko, sinasama ko si Sister Odette sa panalangin. Kasi nakita ko doon, may hawak-hawak si Sister Odette na maraming gamot nila, alaklak niya. Sabi ko, sabi ng Panginoon, mas higit ako nagpapa galing dyan dahil ang panalangin nyo ang kailangan niya hindi kung ano paman kaya sabi ko Lord nagpapasalamat ako sa Diyos dahil bato ako ng ano kaaway lahat na lang nakapuko sa akin pero no reaction ako pagkatapos ng aming meeting pinaghalik ako sila humingi ako ng sorry pasensya na kayo kung nakaaka ko ng hindi maganda so that's one na pinapasalamat ko sa Panginoon dahil no reaction ako. Sabi nga sa akin ni Sister Jane, bakit hindi mo sinabi yung part mo? Sabi ko, Sister Jane, may panahon na para mag-react. So, yun ang nirebel sa akin ng Panginoon. Kaya, pasalamat ako. Tsaka kanina doon sa MC, pinakita din sa akin ng Panginoon dahil hindi na kami matatanda doon sa kumakanta, doon sa panaginip ko. Mga bata. Kaya sabi kanina, parang nag- Nag, parang gusto kong lumundag doon dahil tinawag yung mga young people na magkakanta. Lingalinga ko, sino yung people na magkanta? Sabi naman ni Brother Robin, lady square pala yun. Kaya puri ng Panginoon dahil alam na alam ko, nabababa din yung chance tayo, rarapture rin tayo. Inabalik kong kapasalamat na puri sa ating Panginoon. Amen. Thank you, Sister Letty. It's good. At dumako na tayo sa mga bisita ngayong gabi. Amen. Mabilis na mabilis kung mayroon po. Good. Announcement. Kung may bisita man na hindi na itala ang kanyang pangalan, welcome po kayo sa gawain ng Panginoon. Amen. Enjoy the presence of the Lord tonight. Good. Announcement. Men's Department Overnight Fellowship. So this coming Tuesday na yan mga kapatid. What does the Bible say about involvement in Christian in politics? Good. Kung isipin nyo mga kapatid sa aking idea, ay si Pampantao. Napakaganda na ang maumuno sa isang bansa ay isang totoong Kristiyano. May takot sa Diyos. Meaning to say, pag may takot sa Diyos, um, nagre-reverence siya sa Panginoon. Hindi takot, kundi yung ginagalang niya ang Panginoon. Kung iyan ang maumuno sa ating bansa, tingin kong malaki ang pag-asa ng ating bansa para sa kayo unlad. Pero, what does the Bible say about involvement of Christians in politics? Ano nga ba ang sinasabi ng Biblia? Praise God. So, mga kalalakihan, aking inayayaan kayo. Minsan pa, ngayon darating na Martes, ating overnight fellowship. Amen. October 17, Saturday. So, aking inayayaan uli ang mga kabataan na magkakaroon tayo ng practice ng kanta para sa paparating na youth convention. Sa Saturday na po yan, alas 4, yung mga kabataan na wala rito, at hindi alam ang announcement na ito, pa paabot na lang po mga kapatid. First God, alas 4 ng hapon. Next Sunday rin, yung youth service, 1.30pm. So malalaman ng mga kabataan, nagkaroon po ng election nung nakaraan, at kanina nagkaroon kami ng reshuffle ng mga members at mga bagong groupings. So sa darating na linggo, alaw na imedia, bahagi dyan yung kalaman natin kung anong group na tayo this time. So, first God, Minsan pa, umatin kayo ng youth service, mga kapatid. Amen. October 24, ito yung pinagahanda namin. 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturday po yan, walang pasok. At sa pagkakaalam ko, tapos na yung schooling. Um, same break na. So, sa Taytay pa rin, Overcomer Worship Center, alas 8 hanggang alas 5. Staying focus po ang pinaka-team ng aming 
event sa Proverbs 29:18. So, ini-encourage na lahat ng kabataan ay kanya-kanyang baon para mas madali tayong maipon. Kasi pagkakain tayo sa labas, ang nagiging nakikita naming struggle, magsisimula na yung gawain ng alauna, saka palang isi-serve yung pagkain natin. So, iniiwasan nating malate sa mga gawain. Amen. October 25, next next Sunday, all Sunday school teachers and Sunday schoolers' parents will have a meeting with Pastor A after the service. So, pinapalala po yan sa mga teachers at mga magulang. Amen. October 25. Same day, October 25, picture taking naman ng mga ladies department after the service. So, kasama po pala doon mga kapatid. Sa lahat ng ng mag, ng ladies ay magkakaroon kayo ng picture taking. Morning po ba yan? Morning general general meeting ba yan? Sa 25? Scared. Okay, yung pala yan. Elders general meeting ng 25. Ang agenda natin is church anniversary in camp meeting. So, yung mga panghapon, kaya pala magkakaroon ng picture taking dahil lahat ng panghapon na ladies ay nandito rin that, that day. General service po sa akin na umagahan, mga kapatid. Amen. 25 ng Oktobre. Next. Ayan, bagong-bago po, mga kapatid. Ngayon lang ata to na-announce. Hindi naman. December camp meeting, December 23 to 26. Wednesday hanggang Saturday ang ating camp meeting sa Malolos, Bulacan. Amen. Team natin evolving in the spirit. It's good. Amen. Palapak natin ng Panginoon. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So, reminder mga kapatid, uh, pinapaabot dito ng ating mahal na pastor sa bawat family groups leader natin na yung list ng mga members nila ay maibigay na sa lalot madaling panahon. Amen. Isa pa, katulad ng inannounce noong Wednesday ng ating mahal na MC, Brother Errol, yung after ng service, uh, pinapaalala sa lahat na kung maaari, kung wala na tayong ibang business um, Oo, oh, diretso na tayo umuwi mga kapatid. Kasi iniwasan natin maging sagabal sa daan dahil alam naman ng mga kapitbahay natin dyan kung ano yung patutuong meron tayo. So iniwasan natin na may merong masaktan or makaabala tayo sa mga kapitbahay natin. So kapag wala na po tayong mahaligang bagay na dapat pag-usapan, diretso tayo umuwi. Kung meron man mga kapatid, uh, in-open po ang taas at ganyan din ang likod para sa mga mahalagang pag-uusap nyo. Okay po ba yun, mga kapatid? Amen. Para sa kayusan, dahil God's is God of order. Amen. Thank you, Lord. At prayer request. Amen. Okay, birthday celebrant. Habang pinaghahanda ako si Brother Rico para ipanalangin ang ating offering, tithes, pledges, saka ito, ang mga makarawan ngayong linggo. Because of Jesus, you are free. From all condemnation. Amen. Romans 8.1 Birthday ni Brother PJ De La Rosa, October 11. Amen. Thank you, Lord. October 12. Eh, kanyang karawan. Happy birthday, Sir Rowena. Amen. Sa ibang bansa po ata siya ngayon. October 13, Brother Edgar Lorente, kanyang karawan. Amen. Sa lugar ng Australia. Good. Brother Roland Permito, October 13. Amen. Sister Anna Dutado, October 13, kanyang karawan. Amen. Sister Kay Erisare, October 14 din. Amen. Brother David Angeles, October 15, sa sa mga leaders ng youth. Amen. Sister Lot Bebero, October 15. Sige. Brother Peter Payanan Senior, kanyang karawan sa October 16. Amen. ating magiting na Jacono, Brother Ogi Enriquez, October 16. Amen. Sister Chris Serrano, October 16. 
Our birthday. Amen. Happy birthday from your family, Elect Bride Assembly. Eh, napakahalaga na hindi man natin siya makamayan, pero may sama natin sa panalangin sa ating pagtulog ang mga may karawan ngayon. Thank you, Lord, at akin na pong inanyayahan, Brother Rico. Kayo tumayo, mga kapatid, bilang pag panalangin natin. Amen. Purihin ka, Panginoon. O oh Lord, maraming salamat sa pagkakatong ito. Narito kaming muli upang magpuri sa iyo. Pasalamat, Panginoon. Lingapin mo, Panginoon, na aming mga offering sa hapong ito, Panginoon. At hayaan mo, Panginoon, na ang mga senti mo na aming uh, pagkakaloob ay mapasa yung Lord kalooban. At sa mga humahawak nito, Panginoon, ikaw ang uh, patuloy na kumilos sa kanila upang magamit sa tamang kaparaanan sa aming mga tithes. Uh, ikaw, Diyos, ang patuloy na humipo sa bawat individual, Panginoon. Ama, sa hapong ito, patuloy ka naming uh, pinupuri na sa salamatan, Panginoon. Sa aming mga kapatid na may mga kaarawan, alam mo ang kanilang mga pangangailangan, Panginoon. Higit mo po silang pagpalain sa spiritual na aspeto o Diyos at anuman ang kanilang mga pangailangan sa buhay nito. Alam mo ang kanilang mga kakayanan, Panginoon. Ang sabi nga ni David, Panginoon, sa kanyang pananalita ay huwag mo siyang pagkulangin, Panginoon. Baka siya ay magnakaw at kung siya naman ay pagpalain mo, Panginoon, ay Huwag naman lubos dahil baka naman makalimutan ka niya. Kaya ang dalangin ko sa mga kapatid na ito, alam mo ang kanilang mga pagkatao, Diyos, ikaw ang may sa kanila. Kung kaya, Panginoon, ang mga pagpapalang sapat-sapat, ikaw ang nang- nakakaalam at ipagkaloob mo sa kanila, Panginoon, ayon sa kanilang pangangailangan. O Diyos, dalangin ko ang lahat ng ito, pinupuri ka namin, pinasasalamatan, Pinabalik namin ang lahat ng kapurihan sa pangalan ng aming Panginoong Yesus. Amen. Sige tayo mga kapunan mga kapatid. Habang inaawit natin yung I believe there is more, I believe there is more. Amen. You have been good to me. Yes, Lord. You have been good to me. You have been gracious, you have been faithful, meeting my needs. Yes, Lord, is so plain to see, you have been good to me, I have been given so much I can even Still I believe in still I believe there is more I believe there is more I believe Open my hands to receive all that your love has in store In Lord I believe still I believe hallelujah Still I believe there is more I believe there is more I believe So I open my hands to receive All that your love has in store In Lord I believe In Lord, I believe. Amen. Thank you, Lord. At naniniwala ako na handa na bawat isa. Amen. At sana hindi tayo, hindi magkulang ating mga sa oras. Amen. At binibigyan natin siya ng mahabang oras para hindi siya mabitin. Amen.
So, mga kapatid, uh, without further ado, tayo tumayo na. As I welcome Brother David Minga, even tonight. Can we sing a song? Amen. It won't be long. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Buksan natin ang mga puso ngayon, mga kapatid, na maging, amen, magalang sa salita at damihin ang kanyang presensya, ang kanyang mga salita ay atin tanggapin. Hallelujah. Amen. What belong, yes, Lord. We'll be living here. It won't be long. We'll be going home. Amen. We'll be going home. We shall be like him. Amen. Oh, we shall be like Him, like Jesus. We shall be like Him, like Jesus. In a twinkling of an eye, in the moment of time, we'll be going home. Mr. Bai, it won't be long. Amen. What belong? Yes, Jesus. We'll be living here. It won't be long. We'll be going home. Amen. We'll be going home. Right, David. Amen. Oh, we shall be like Him, like Jesus. We shall be like May the Lord bless you all. You. Let us bow our head in prayer. Heavenly Father, here we are, Lord Jesus, before you. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the opportunity you have given us, Lord Jesus, to be in your presence, Lord. And we ask, Lord, that you be with us, Lord, as you said in your word, that where well, two or three will be, will gather in your name, Lord. You will be there, Lord Jesus. So come, comfort us, Lord Jesus. Speak to us, correct us, and show us the way, Lord Jesus. Set us in heavenly places, Lord Jesus. Move us from this world, Lord Jesus. We want to be in your presence. We want to live with you. We want to be in your kingdom, Lord Jesus Christ. In this world is a deception, sickness, a trouble, a problem, and a all corruption, Lord Jesus. But we want to be in your presence, Lord. Where we can find the comfort, Lord Jesus. Where we can find life, Lord Jesus. And the eternal life, Lord. So be with us, Lord. Comfort us, Lord Jesus. Bless us, Lord. Give solution to everyone that needs it, Lord Jesus. Those who are sick, Lord, I pray that you may heal them in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. And any problem, any situation, Lord, may you, O oh Lord, give peace and answer this afternoon. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you all. Amen. It has been so, <laughs> so long, <laughs> and I miss you so much. <laughs> Wow, glory to the Lord. <laughs> okay, let us read the word first. So we will 
Will talk, let us open our Bibles in Matthew chapter 6. We start from 9. Nine to thirteen. We can read all of us. It's a prayer that uh, our Lord Jesus Christ gave us to pray. So let us all pray together as we are reading all together. Okay, we can read together. After this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father which is. Amen. You may be seated. Yeah. Thank you very much. I say thank to, to Pastor for the opportunity has given me to, 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 to be with you, to share with you uh, this afternoon. And uh, I thank all the church. I know you are have been supporting me in everything, mostly for your prayer and the, all the situation. And uh, God does not leave us. God is with us, and God is uh, taking care of us. Yeah, I think uh, uh, on myself, I really <laughs> don't think I came here to Philippines to work. <laughs> but of course, it's a duty of every man to work and uh, provide life for families. Man, we are to walk. The Bible says God does not like uh, weak, or, or, or weak people or uh, slumber people, you know, you know, lazy people, thank you. God does not like lazy. You know, in Proverbs 6, 6, he said, go to the ants and learn the... You know, the, the way they are, you know, they, they, they don't, they, they, you know, they, they, they don't even know how to walk or what, but they, they know how to save their food. You know, they can get their food and they save it, and they, when the time comes, they can, you know, when the, the time of, uh, of, uh, of uh, you know, uh, famine comes, they have their food. So the Bible says, you lazy, you slumber, go and learn the, 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 the lesson from those ants. Right. So we are not uh, Christian to be lazy and to sleep and say, God will do everything. No. God will, will do something when you do something. Yeah. When you start doing something, God will bless you in that thing. Yeah. So it is a responsibility that just as uh, Paul also was saying, even though I have the right to ask you for help, but I don't do it. I try to work with my hands to provide my needs so that uh, I will not be a, a stumbling block to anyone. So that is the way we are. We are not to be lazy. Children of God must know how to, to work and uh, provide. So I thank God that he has given me a job, even though... Uh, Satan is trying to, to make you know, some kind in the schedule, but uh, I know God is taking care. And uh, he's just, uh, you know, mistaken. <laughs> because he can try to, to stack us somewhere, but uh, we are not stuck in that way. A child of God, even in the prison, he is still in the presence of God. So we are not in the presence of God just here in the church. Here we come for a fellowship. Amen. But a son of God is always in presence of God. Amen. Be in the presence of God every minute, every hour, every second. Amen. Wherever you are, be in the presence of God. Amen. 
And as we used to say, you know, there, there is a time that, you, that they will close all these doors of the churches, and you have to take care of yourself. You have to show yourself how, how good Christian you are. If you are just making yourself a Christian here in the church, then you, you, will, you will face that time. When we cannot gather here, how can you stand to be a Christian? So learn to be a Christian every time, everywhere, everywhere. Amen. Amen. Glory to the Lord. So we just thank God and I thank God for you. I, 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 I thank you all so much for all your prayer and the support and everything you do. We, we I just, I, as I used to say, nothing that I can give you, but I give you the Lord Jesus Christ. So let us go to our little subject tonight. I wanted to speak about thy kingdom come. As we just read, uh, Jesus Christ uh, teaches us how to pray. He said uh, every time when you want to pray, it was a meaningful prayer. If you can only understand what he, wa he wanted to mean, everything that you can ask is in this prayer. Jesus is uh, 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 teaching, teaching us how to pray and say, Our Father which is at in heaven, hallowed is be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in it as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come. What is a kingdom? A kingdom is a king domain. You know, it is where a king reigns. You know, it is uh, a domain of king, where a king rules. You know, we have a uh, 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 different type of, uh, of, uh, of, a, of a state. We have a, a republic, we have a, and we also have a kingdom. So in the kingdom, just like the kingdom of UK, you know, of England, you know, it is uh, Queen Elizabeth reigning. So they, they don't choose him, you know, the... A king is a king. He is uh, born in the king family, and they are in the kingship. You know, when, when one died, they replace another one in the same kingship family, in the same family of kings. So it's not like a president that has to stay five or six, six years, and they, they will choose another one. No, a king is a king to reign and to rule forever. So we have a kingdom of the eight. And we have the kingdom of God. So it is just like uh, uh, two realms, you know. And uh, on this, uh, this kingdom of the air, of course we know Satan is reigning. You know, God has given him a time to reign down. He is reigning, as Brother Branham said. You know, he was even telling to Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ came, he said, If you bow before me, I will give you all this kingdom. Because what he knew, it belonged to him. He is ruling. He is the owner of this kingdom. Just like a brother Abraham preached about uh, uh, Satan's Eden. It is a Satan's Eden now. Amen. You know, he is ruling, he is doing everything in his, his own Eden. That we have our own kingdom, which is the kingdom of God, which is the Eden of God, where there is no... De death, there is no cry, there is no trouble, there is no, there is no uh, 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 you know, suffering, or there is no crisis there. It is peace and eternal peace. It is life and eternal life. But in the kingdom of Satan, we have all the troubles that we have. Why? Because Satan cannot love. You know, Satan cannot give you something good. Satan does not even have life to himself to give you. Even though God has given him all the power, he has given him everything, but only the power to create, he cannot have that. Only the life, the power of life, he does not have that. So, as we know that from the beginning, because of the power that God has given to the human, you know, Satan could not reign having a human with all the power. 
Because the human, he could, he could not at, uh, attack human or he could not uh, rule upon a human as long as the human was still have the power from God. So the only technique, only thing he did is to deceive man so that man will lose that authority so he will get it. And he will become the king to rule even upon the man. That's why we have lost our right. Because of what we did, we have lost our right, our right and we have given our right to Satan. And the Satan become our ruler. And the Satan become to, to command us and to, to impose his life on the earth. That's why you see, you know, he rules everything. He can even tell to Jesus, if you bow before me, I give you all this because it belongs to me. All, all, the human and everything, it belongs to me now. That's why we, were, we lost our, our, our privilege. We lost everything. But God has promised us. All that was purposely. God knew why he let it happen. Because God cannot create a man that is made in his image to be lost and to be ruled by Satan. You know, he just gave him a time, but there is a time. He appointed that he will come back and buy back, you know, to redeem the man back. So that we will not walk anymore under the rule of Satan, but we will be free from every bondage. Amen. Even free from death. Amen. Even death cannot, cannot, cannot rule you anymore. Amen. Death cannot hold you anymore. Amen. Because why? Because you are over. The price has been paid for that. Amen. And we can see the trouble. All the suffering and the sickness and the trouble that we, you know, Satan in his kingdom and the giving, all this trouble that we have. And we can see that if we have all this, because there is no love in the world anymore. Because love is that great power of God. Love is the very life of God. Without love, where there is absence of love, it's always trouble. Because the life cannot be in harmony without love. Where love is not, there is hatred, there is trouble, there is a fight, there, there is all kind of trouble. That's why we see the wicked, wickedness of the heart of a human. You can see all the trouble we have is because of the, the wickedness of our heart. A human trying to make another human his slave. You know, trying to enslave another human. We cannot love each other. You know, there are so, so great people, rich people. And if you, you, see, you, can, you can read, you know, uh, according to the statistics, they are showing that the, 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 the quantity, quantity of, uh, of food that is being wasted... You know, so much uh, food that they are, the world is producing. Maybe 50% of all the, the production of the world is being wasted. And uh, if you take those wasted food and uh, you take the number of people that are living in poverty, those, those wasted are even more, can feed even two times those people. But why? The, why? But what? It's just being wasted like that. You know, a rich man, instead of sharing, because the love is not there, he will waste the money for nothing. You know, someone will take a lion and put it in the house, become to feed it every day. You know, a lion is not made to live in the house. A lion is free there in the wilderness. He can catch his prey himself. Yes. And you will take it and you killing the animal every day to feed that. That animal you can give someone, a human who is suffering somewhere. Why? No love on the earth. And we are killing each other ourselves. No, no man, no, you know, 
there is no a, a, a son of God that can wish to stay in this world. No. It is a very wickedness, a wicked, wicked world. It is a very wicked kingdom. So we need the kingdom of God. We need the rulership of God. We need a king like God that loves us, that gives us everything that we need. In that kingdom, there we know about fear and fight. There is no jealousy. There is no criticizing you or whatever. No. There is a peace and a joy and a happiness that you will never imagine. So let's talk about the kingdom. Many times, you know, the word of God is always being misunderstood. In many times, even the trouble that we have, in, in message of doctrines and the things and the whatever, is coming from the misunderstanding of the word of God, misunderstanding of the very revelation that we have get in this time. As we all know that the revelation is only given to the children of God, those who have been appointed by God. If you have not been appointed by God, you cannot understand anything of the kingdom of God. It is a mystery. It is a secret. As Brother Branham preached, he said, you know, God hiding himself, you know. He hide and then reveal himself in a simplicity. He hide first from the greater, from the intellectual people. He hide himself from the theologian and the, all the people. And then he reveals him, himself to the simple people. To confuse the wisdom of this world. As we can see, Brother Bram that never, never studied, never, you know, he, no, he did not even finish his, uh, his uh, primary school. But the things that he, he teach, even the doctors cannot understand that. The great doctor of theology cannot understand. Why? Because it is a revelation from God. Yes. When God comes to you, it does not matter your level of study. <laughs> so to understand the kingdom of God, it does not matter your school that you have studied. It does not matter your position in the, in, in the, in, in the world or in, in, the, in the company or in whatever you are. It is simply be chosen by God. It is simply to be a son of God and that God cannot leave you. That's why we can see that every prophet or everyone that comes, even Jesus himself when he comes and the preaching, the way he was speaking, it was a, spe a special way that only the elect can get it. To other people, it was making them mad, you know. When they listened to his saying, you know, it was a foolishness to them. How can he tell, tell us uh, such kind of things? How can he tell us to eat his body? That was a foolishness to them. But to the elect one, even though they did not know, even though they did not understand what Jesus was meaning, they still following him. Because why? They know that should be the, life, the word of eternal life. So the word of God you know, is a foolishness to this world. That's why Brother Branham preached about the oddball. We are oddball in this world. They call us foolish and we are calling them foolish. The things they are doing is just foolishness. But they don't understand that. And when they look at us, they are also calling us, you are foolish. So this is the way we are in this world. It is two kingdom. It is two dimension of life. 
So it depends to what dimension you are living. It depends to what path you are. And they call us foolish. And the brother Branham said, you see, they cannot understand. It is impossible to them to understand. They think that even a little boy can understand, but you will see a great theologian with all his glasses like this. He can try to, but he will never understand the simple things of the kingdom of God. Jesus was telling it to Nicodemus, you are a teacher of law. And you don't know the simple things? If I give you the example of the natural life, you cannot understand. How much more if I speak to you the things of the heaven? And that is only given to the elect one. That's why we are privileged people. We cannot uh, underestimate ourselves. We are precious before God. To be chosen and be separated from this world. Imagine the time that we are living. It's a terrible time. And a big Christian in this time. Be Christian in your office, in the place you are. Be Christian in your, in your, in your area, the place you are living. All the neighbors and the, all the, 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 the things they are doing, the music, the way they wear and the everything, to be a Christian, to make a difference, it is not easy if it's not the grace of God. But nevertheless, there are also fanatics. There are also, you know, impersonators who are creating, who are trying to make themselves a Christian. That's why Brother Branham said, in every church, in every group, there are three kinds of Christians. Not everyone that comes, even Jesus said, not everyone that said, Father, Father, that will enter in the kingdom of God, but the one that do the will of my Father. Amen. And how can you do the will of your Father, if his Father, if you don't know what that will is? Amen. And that will is only revealed to those who have been appointed to know it. And we see churches, we see people everywhere. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Many will come in my name. They will even produce many miracles. But that does not mean that they have the kingdom of God in them. They are just impersonators. They are just theologian people. They are just understanding the world intellectually. And they understand that when a prophet comes, he has a food for the theologian and a food for the, 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 the eagles, so the children of God, for the chosen one. His preaching is giving to the theologian the te their teaching. They have a part of their teaching. They get it intellectually and they teach it intellectually. And they make theologian upon the preaching of the prophet. Just as you have, you have seen, uh, uh, we have seen uh, the, the Lutheran and, uh, and, uh, and um, uh, uh, Wesleyan and uh, all, all those, you know, God sent a man. A man will speak and upon those, those, those uh, teachings, they will take it and they make it a school of theology. Studying his words as, oh, that was is what he said. But God never intended to, to make a theology school. You know, he's, when he speaks, there are children of God that catch the true revelation. Amen. But to other people, it's just a, a lesson to study in the school. <laughs> and today we can see even in the message, oh, we are not making a school. But as long as you are studying the world, you are studying the prophet intellectually, you are just a theologian. It's a theology. It's a study of God. Theology is a study of God. Trying to study God 
from the Bible. Because the Bible is the book of prophets. You know, the Bible is the book of prophets. You know, when prophets come, he speak and they will record his life and what he said in the Bible. And all the records of the prophets and the, the, the people of God, you know, God has made it, you know, to put it together. And what, that is what we call today a Bible. So the theology, what they do, they just take, they go there and they will really study this, did like this, did like this, and they, and they study the law and everything of the Bible and they make it, they, they make the, they base the doctrines and the things upon that. But the children of God, they have another understanding. They have a pure understanding. The problem is not only to get what the prophet said, but the problem is to, to get what he means there. Let us read a little bit. Now, my subject this, uh, this morning, I trust that God will reveal this. And uh, each time, if you who take the tips and uh, listen, and I hope uh, and I trust that uh, you have a spiritual understanding of what uh, that God has been trying to get over to the church without saying it right out. See? It is a thing. Sometimes we have to say things in such a way that uh, it might thin down. It might bring some to go out, some to live, and uh, some to ponder over. But that is done purposely. It must be done that way. Then it might be uh, that some would say, you mean God would purposely do a thing like that? He certainly did. He does yet. He said one day, you know, as you know, when, uh, uh, when he, he had thousands of, around him, he said, except you eat of the flesh of the Son of, man, of God or Son of Man, and they drink his blood, you have no life in you. See, God doing it purposely. You know, saying, you know, God speaking to the church, but not saying it clearly, directly. You know, he has a way to speak to his people, you know. He speaks to the church because, you know, it is not everyone in the church that must get this. God is even jealous with his word. Not everyone that should get that. Because when he was even preaching to, to, the, to the crowd, you know, always the mystery, always the, the parables, parables, parables. And his disciples ask him, why are you always speaking in parables in the, in the crowd? And uh, when you come to us, you speak to us, uh, you, you open the, the mystery to us. He said, because the kingdom of God has been given to you. It was been given to you the seek to know the secret of the kingdom of God, but not to those people. You know, the Bible says that with his stumbling tongue, he will speak to those people so that they will hear, but they will not understand anything. So, you know, people may come to the church, you know, you may be a good Christian attending every day. But if it is not given to you to understand, you will never understand anything. And the word of God will be just a law for you. You know, it's just like a something that imposes you to live. But the children of God, they don't live by the law. The law is under their feet. You know, because it is their life. They are not trying to force it. Because they have 
they have been made in that way. They are children of God to be gone. They come from God and they know the life of God. Christ is living in them and they are not under any law. They are not under any doctrine. Nothing can bound them. No. They are free from everything. That's why last time I was saying here that the, the Bible, the very Bible of God is us. God did not write a Bible with, uh, with uh, inks and uh, so the very Bible is the human. God writes the law in our heart. And uh, we are, we are the, the, you know, the epistle of God. People are reading our life to understand God. That's why you see the confusion. If they, 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 they try to study God in the book, you cannot find God in the book. The book is the records of the life of other, other people. We go and we read the life of Moses. And we understand, you know. And the children of God, they don't just understand the way the believers are understanding. You know, the children of God, when they read, is, there is something from inside them that confirms that that is the word of God. And they know exactly how to live it. It is not a bondage to them. But to other people, it is a bondage. When they tell him, don't cut the hair, oh, it's a trouble. You know, he do that because he don't, he don't want to disappoint his friend. He don't want to disappoint his father or his church. But inside his heart, it's just a bondage. Why? He's living under the law. The law is, 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 is stronger than him. But a child of God, you know, it is not a problem to him. Because why? That, you know, you know, the spirit of the law inside saying when he hear the word, it is it, it responding amen to the word of God. It's just like a relying and say, that is it. You know, it's just confirming what is in, inside him or inside her. That's why you see people living under the law, even being in this message. We are beyond the, the time of the law. Far away. The law was for the Old Testament. And the way God was giving them that law, you know, to, you know, to tame them. You know, to tame the unbeliever. The law was not given for the, the, the righteous one. No, God cannot give a law to, to his child, you know, because the law of God is already written in his heart. You know, the law is given to the believer to tempt them. That's why they came to Jesus and they asked him, did Moses, ask him, Moses, why did Moses uh, allow us to give the, the letter of divorce? And the Jesus tell, him, tell them, because of the hardening of your heart. But in the beginning, it was not like that. There are, because of the hardening of the heart, God gave them the law. You know, God gave the law because of the hardening of your heart. But the law is not given to a child of God. Because a child of God lives beyond the law. I remember when I just believed to the message and... Uh, I was in my last school of, uh, uh, my, my last class of, uh, of high school, and in exam there, you know, there, uh, we call it a state exam before you finish the, you'll be graduated for the higher school. And uh, there is a, a cheating system there that is so terrible. So they have to put even the policeman, you know, to, to keep you very well, so you cannot move, you know, so. You know, when the police is passing beyond me, I tell him, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, I don't need the police to keep me. I keep myself. I am beyond that law. I cannot, I cannot cheat. No. I know God. 
You know, that's why the Bible says, Brother Bonami was saying, the law is just like the police that is, is, is keeping you. But for a child of God, you don't need the police because you, you, you naturally live the life. <laughs> you don't cheat. You know, if we have a police today in the Philippines because of the trouble, if we have a judge because of, you know, wickedness of people, so they have to, to scourge us, they have to catch us, they, you know, to discipline us. But for a child of God, no one can discipline him because he disciplined himself. There is the Holy Ghost in him disciplining him. So that is how we are. People understand things with the law. And they don't know that the law is holding them down. You know, the law, we are, we are above the law. You know, we are not to be that legalist. You know, people, when they get message, uh, they become so legalist. You don't do that. Brother Branham said. Brother Branham said. And I am above that. I don't live under the law. I know Brother Branham said, but I am not stuck under the law. The law is given to you, legalist, to, to, you know, to fight yourself. But I am beyond the law. That's why you see, every time when God sends a man, he comes and the world don't understand him. Mostly what? Mostly the religious people. Because what? They are stuck on the tradition. They cannot understand the real meaning of the, being a child of God. A child of God, there is a law written in his heart. He is a book of God walking on the earth. There, there is no anyone that teach him. He have an inside teacher there. The inside teacher is just confirming the word that he hears from the preacher. When the preacher speaks, there is inside speaker, you know, the telephone telling him, Amen, that is right. Amen. And he lives that not because someone forced him, but because he understands, because it is his nature, because it is what he is made for. And you know, people try to say, oh, Brother David, the legalist, or so and so. Yeah, there is a time that we have to preach things. To preach things is not to be legalist. But a child of God must understand his position. When I was saying that the law was given to, to, to you know, to, to, to tam some people, tame them, you know, God was, you know, if there is no law, you know, there sh will be trouble everywhere. If there is no police, as I was saying, if there is no judge to, make the, to, to judge and put the order, there will be trouble. The same time, the same thing we are here. There is a, some law. God gave it purposely to keep other, you know, so that they don't make trouble. But the children of God, they know their position. No matter what is given, they know their position. They are not stuck. They are, they are not feel, they're feeling themselves under bondage of anything. You know, if I was a, 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 a legalist, I, I will not marry even a Filipino. A Filipino woman, you know how people are saying before I get married. <laughs> Brother Branham said, Brother Branham said, very good, Brother Branham said. <laughs> Brother Branham said, very well. Of course, I believe Brother Branham said. 
but I am not stuck under the law. That is not given to me to, to stack me somewhere. God knows himself. The things of the marriage is a personal revelation. You must get it from God. And the things of the marriage is not the same, something you, you have to compare this and this and this. God knows why he gives you that woman. God knows why he gives you that man. I was before, of course, I was a real legalist before. God tried to, to, to you know, to, 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 to set me up, you know. Before you tell me that I will do that, no! And the first time, let, let me say the first time I saw, it was uh, a brother, uh, brother Sam from Canada. When he came with uh, his, his wife, uh, Filipino, I wanted to run from the church. I was so hurt. Oh my God. Why? Brother Pranam said, You cannot marry another, another race. Why? Why this man? And he is a preacher. I said, Oh, let me find a way to run. Of course, I was hurt. But God knows how to correct. You know? And uh, from that out, you know, God knew how to correct me. And uh, finally, where he brought me, you don't know how God brought me to finally be married to a Filipino. God have his way of making things. I never think of that. I never even dream of that. But God has made his way. And you, you, can, oh, you, can, you can try to, to compare or whatever. I am not there because I know what God told me. I know where the, way, the way God brought me to, 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 to marry that woman. And the purpose of that, if you cannot have a spiritual eyes to see, I can't force you to see. But I know God had a purpose to do that. And even for me to be in the Philippines today, you think I can do that? I will leave Hong Kong and they come here in the Philippines to live. But that they are the way God has made it. You know, when God has something to do with you, you cannot escape. He will make you do that. I force, I, I, I... <coughs> I did my effort not to come to Philippines. We even tried to, to find a job for my wife to work there in Hong Kong, but yet, God refused that. You know, and when I tried to, to, to harden my heart, you know, my first son is gone. I said, oh, God, please. Now I understand. I will follow your will. Let me go to Philippines. God knows how to make his way. And if I come here, I know God has his way. Amen. So I don't have to, to bother myself of that. And of course, after my marriage, I even post. I knew there are so many legalists. I even post my picture, my wedding picture on the FB to, to receive all the fight. <laughs> and I told you it was not easy. <laughs> Mostly from my brethren from Africa. Oh, my God. You, you did that. <laughs> but the problem is people don't really understand. Well, what God will do with a color of a skin? The, the, the thing is the Holy Ghost inside. The problem is when you are both of the same kingdom. Our character is a bubble character. Amen. We have no law but love. Amen. We have no book but a bubble. <laughs> we are one family of God. Amen. We don't have a difference of skin. The skin is just, you know, just here above. But inside we are some. Amen. So there is no difference of that before God. 
And uh, you know, people will just try to, Brother Branham said, of course he said, that is a law for you, but for me it's not a law. Yeah. For me, I understand my position. If God told me to do that, who am I to resist? So it is, diff it is the way that the children of God are. You must know how to follow what God tells you than what the religion has made or what the set of doctrine or whatever, whatever. The children of God, they are beyond every law. They are beyond every condemnation. Brother Branham did not make a law to condemn people. Yeah. It is not a law. You know, it is, it is a way he was explaining. And I, of, 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 because of that, I'm not forcing people to become like me. You must follow your revelation. Amen. Why would you do that? Because I see some people, even my wife was telling me some sister from Hong Kong was asking her, Oh, is it right? I found some boyfriend there and saw so his uh, uh, color and uh, so and so and so. I say, you follow your revelation. You follow what is the purpose in your heart. Why do you have to do that? If you still have, you know, there are even some, they have a boyfriend. If you still have a boyfriend, you still have someone. Why should you wish to, to, to choose someone from Africa so far? Why? You know your purpose. The, the answer is in your heart. You know, Brother Branham said, you can try to make something that is lies like a, like to be true, you know, but the lies is still a lies. You cannot deceive your own heart. You know the purpose. If the purpose is, oh, let me uh, uh, marry and make mulatto, or just like Brother Branham said, that is the wrong purpose. You know, if you don't have the real revelation that God has revealed you to marry that man or that woman, get away of that. Your heart is a witness. You know yourself. You cannot deceive your heart. If you try to deceive yourself, to convince yourself in the wrong things, of course you will have a consequence of that. But a child of God must humble and follow the will of God. We are not to live any, 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 under any law, you know, to, to, to stack ourselves somewhere. But there is a law in our heart that is telling us the true way. You know your reason, you know your, your purpose, and the God will judge you for that. The judgment will come from your heart. You know the Bible says that the judgment starts in the church. You know, when we hear the word, you know, we compare with what is in our heart, then you know your position. So, take a, come out of fanatism. Come out of some kind of uh, things that uh, hold you in. You know the truth in your heart. Sometimes, you know, people ask questions. question. question is just to test you, but they, they have already, they know the truth in their heart. You know, he comes, hey, Brother David, do you think this is back? He knows his position. He knows already his position. And sometimes when you advise him, he gets mad because it is different from what he thinks from his heart. So why are you asking me if you already know your position? Be true to yourself. That's the kingdom of God. So let's get to our Back to our topic, we are speaking about the kingdom as we are saying that uh, people misunderstand things. They get it in the, in the kind of, uh, of a law or of, uh, of a doctrine to make doctrine and uh, theology upon the, the world of the hour. But God has his children that understand the revelation in a very simplicity way. So we understand. Let us read, as Brother Branham said here. Now listen, I want to tell you something. And listen closer to it. At this remark, I'm going, 
I'm going to be just a little bit different this morning. I'm going to let myself lose with some of my own theology, some of my own thoughts, my own conceptions of the scripture that I have never said in this church before or no other church. But I feel that it might be profitable this morning. Every man in his own heart has idea, ideas and uh, so forth that uh, he believes and uh, holds secret in, into his heart. His secret between him and God that no one else knows about that but uh, him and God alone. You know that. Everyone of you believes, uh, believers know that. Just the believer and his maker. I never believed that heaven was a place where there is a bunch of uh, buildings, where there is a bunch of uh, houses and up there made with uh, mortar, uh, double, uh, and uh, with uh, paper paint on the wall. I have never believed that uh, a supernatural being would have to live uh, in literal house. I believe when Jesus spoke in John 14, he said, in my father's house is many mansions. He meant a body, a dwelling place for the scripture uh, very verify the same thing. They say if his, uh, uh, if this earthly tabernacle be dissolved, we have one already waiting. You see it. Mortal being is the only one who lives in mortal habitations. Immortal being lives in immortal habitations. And the place that we go into until we return back is not a place of bricks, mortar and clay, or precious stones or jewels. It is a place, a condition that will move out of this dimension that we live into, into another dimension. And uh, it is a house, a tabernacle, a dwelling place. Jesus said, destroy this temple and I will raise it up in three days. And uh, they thought he was uh, speaking of uh, the Solomon's temple. But uh, he was speaking of his own body. And he is gone to prepare a place for every believer that the very moment we step out of this mortal region, we don't go out into myth or some supernatural spirit, but we go into a tabernacle, a dwelling place, and that might be right here in this building. This morning, in a place that no other radio activity or uh, nothing can touch, it is there solely fixed by God alone. Amen. That is what God was, uh, Brother Branham was saying, trying to say about his own theology. You know that the people, we, or everyone, every believer has his kind of, of mind, of what he thinks of the kingdom of God. You know, in some time when we, 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 we study the world, some time when we listen to preaching, and uh, when we, we hear from a prophet and uh, whatever, even when Jesus came here and what was speaking about the kingdom of God, we are just thinking about somewhere that we find the big houses and the palace and the beautiful roads and the things, and the, we think of a big city. But the Brother Branham said here that I'm trying to break my theology now. 
to let you know that when he speaks about that kingdom, I'm going to prepare a place to you. It does not mean a place going to build the house, uh, houses with mortar and the things like that, like we see the beautiful city of, of this age. But what he means is a body. He's going to prepare a body for you. And that is a tabernacle. That is where we will, we will live. And he said, you know, I believe that a mortal, a mortal being are those that live in the mortal things. But a supernatural or immortal things lives in the immortal body, in immortal things. You know, so our conception, all of us, when we understand Jesus saying, oh, we will have a, a super, we think that we will sit and, uh, with golden spoon and we will eat lentils. No! It is a supernatural life. You know, we have some time to, you know, to check our conception of the world. You know, so most of the time people was not understanding Jesus Christ. When he was trying to preach them the kingdom of God, people are just getting conception of the natural life. That's why he was before the king. You know, and they were asking him, are you the king of Judah? Are you the king of Israel? They are trying to judge him. But he told them, my kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom of, is not of what you see here. If it was so, I will call my angels. They will fight for me, for me to take no, you see, if God wanted to sit in this kingdom, you know, in this earth, you know, and the rule uh, in this natural life, uh, of course, he has his, his angels, you know, just in one minute he can, you know, you know, just throw out everything and he will have his kingdom. But his kingdom is not what we see and what we, we hear here. You know, he said here in the, in the John... In John 18, no, I mean in Luke 17, and when he was uh, uh, demanded, Luke, Luke 17, 20, when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God comes not with observation. Neither shall they, they say, lo, here, or lo, there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. The conception we have of the kingdom is just a big city somewhere with delight, like, uh, you know, beautiful roads with golden roads. Uh, like uh, in Japan, they have uh, some... Some space of a golden road, golden place, you know. It's not in that way that we understand always. But the spiritual people must enter in the spirit to understand. That's why, you know, when Jesus told the prophecy of John the Baptist, he said that John the Baptist will come and he will make the, the highway. People thought he will come with a tractor and build the highways. No, it was not that way. The way that John the Baptist was making is the way in the heart. Preaching the word of God to let Christ enter in the heart of people. It is not the, the, the highway that we have here. No, that is the way the word of God is being misunderstood every time. And we have promises. We have the word of God that has promised us the kingdom of God to come. Yeah. And Jesus even told us, you must always pray, thy kingdom come. Let the kingdom of God come in your heart. Let the kingdom of God come and rule your life. Give your life to the, to the right king. Don't give your life to the, to the wrong king that is Satan. But surrender your life to the right king. He will rule your kingdom very well. Amen. The problem is the terminology. 
the, the way we get terms, you, the way we, we define terms. We have to define the, the message in the new way now. Our conception is holding us somewhere. You know, Brother Branham said, he said, uh, you are going to find out one of these days that when you go to heaven, you don't fly, you don't fly off somewhere else. You are still right here. Right here too, just in another dimension, faster than this. You are going to find that when you go to heaven, of, of when, when, when we used to understand, of course, uh, every time we know, and we are going to fly, and we think we will just like a, <laughs> just like an airplane or... Oh no, a spaceship and they go, Ooh, no. Heaven is a dimension. Heaven is just here. Brother Branham said, even the house that you hear, the house that Jesus is going to, to build, that tabernacle, he said, it may be here in this tabernacle tonight. It is just here. Heaven is a dimension. Heaven is an atmosphere. Right. That's why in the souls that are in the prison, Brother Bruno preach, you know, the souls are in the prison now. People are living in the hell. You should be living in the hell or in the heaven. It depends on the dimension that you are living. All the dimensions are here. You know, heaven, uh, you know, hell is a fifth dimension. It's still here. Right. There are people that are in the hell, living in the hell. You know, there are people that walk, they live, but they are already in the hell. And a child of God is already sitting in the heavenly places. <laughs> that is the heavens that we need. That is the kingdom of God. That is where God rules us. Amen. He found us there and he rules us there. Amen. And we are under the dominion of the kings of kings. Oh my God. And understand the conception of people. How Brother Branham said, if I can't get the world to see it, what difference? They never see it in any age. Never. But God's, God's just, uh, he sends it anyhow, you know. People will never see, but God sent it anyhow. Then when it is all over, they say, well, we did not know that. Sure enough, did that happen? I did not know it. Oh, yeah. It has always been that way. It, that, it is that way today. It is that way today, brethren. Listen, this is the hour. This is the day. You are looking for something out yonder and the devil trying to place something off out yonder at some time, you are going to be in the millennium before you know it. You are going to be in the millennium before you know it. It is at the end time now. That Brother Branham saying. You see, people will never believe and they will never understand. They just surprise all oh, the things already happened. Why? They, still, they will never understand what God is doing in the present. They, try, they will always try to put something to come and to, to think about what already passed, but to see what God is doing, they don't, they don't mind. 
You know, that we just think of, oh, a greater man that was before. When they preach, Brother Branham, oh, Brother Branham was doing this, was doing this, was doing this. But we came from the same source with Brother Branham. If that God of Brother Branham is our God, God is still walking with us the same way. If God does not have children on the earth anymore, of course this earth will be destroyed. If this, this earth is still standing because he has his children. And if he has his children, he must treat them all the same way. Don't underestimate yourself. We are even in the summit of the revelation time. More than the Old Testament, more than the Lydian and the Pentecostal ages. We are beyond that. We are living in the new atmosphere today. And the brother Branham said, you see, you are going even to be surprised that you are already in a millennium and you didn't know that. And that is so surprising. We, th we think millennium, we have to fly first to heaven and they come back and they reign in a millennium. How can, can we be in a millennium without knowing that? We must check our conception. Let's understand. The millennium is a rest. The meaning of the millennium. You know, every time that Brother Bani speaks speaking to the millennium, there are two kinds. He speaks of the eternal millennium, you know, and the millennium as a rest, as a seventh day. Yeah. Brother Brown said the millennium is a seventh day. It is still not even a perfect world. No, it's not a perfect yet. Right. Notice, this is still not referred to this millennium reign. The thousand, the thousand years is not the new age. See, the millennium reign is a different reign. That is what we go into, the millennium, but uh, that is not the new age, the new heaven. No, no, that, that is just a rest place, see, a rest period, not at all the new heavens and the new age. For, you see, in the millennium, we have things that will not go into that. It is a type of all the seventh day. Out, out at Eden, the seventh day after they made the world, the seventh day, the seventh day he rested in Eden and the millennium. See, the world was now almost 6,000 years old. See, even every 2,000 years it is had a destruction. See, first 2000, the flood came and uh, he baptized in it with uh, water. Next 2000, Jesus came to sacrifice it and uh, claim it, drop his blood upon it, called it his. All right. I will come again. Oh, now a king with his queen. And in the second 2,000 years, what does he do? He comes and gives his rest period. And then burn her off and claim it for his own, put his own back on it. You know, Brother Branham is making a difference here. There is a new age, and a, 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 an eternal millennium that is kind of the, the, the new Jerusalem. You know, it is eternal millennium because the millennium as a period of time, thousand years, as he said, is not eternal. But when he's speaking about the eternal millennium, there is, where, is, where, where there is no death, there is no cry, there is no, that is a new age. You know, a new age and a new, a new, a new heaven. 
you know, the new Jerusalem that comes from heaven. That is where there is no trouble. But Brother Ben said, in the millennium, there is a period of a millennium that is a type of the seventh day, that is the Sabbath, seventh day, the rest. So Brother Ben even preaches the, the Holy Ghost is that type of Sabbath. You know, is a rest. He gives you and you rest from all your, your trouble. You know, you rest from your sin and you are free from every bondage. It brings the freedom, the rest of life. So you have life in you. You have the atmosphere of heaven, you know. The heaven has come in you. And you have the rest of God. And the Bible said, Jesus said that, come to me with your burden and the trouble and I will give you rest. What is the rest? The millennium, peace. And notice, not the perfect world. This millennium, it is a type of the seventh day. The, then come the white throne judgment. See, we still have judgment. We are still in the time. In the millennium, it is a day. One thousand years, it is a time element. Not, don't get that mixed up with the new age. No, because it is not. Don't get it mixed with the new eight. The new eight is there is no time anymore. There is no suffering. There is no tomb in anything. There is no judgment after the new eight. No. But after the millennium, we still have a judgment. We still have a trouble. It is just, it is just the condition of the life inside. There are two types of millennium. We have to understand when Christ comes in you. And the people today fight about the coming and the so and so. What coming are we? Or people preach, oh, we are second coming, third coming, and the fight. There is only one coming that people should mind of. And it is an eternal coming. Let me read here. May, may they not only be baptized with water, which is only an outward sign that uh, something inside has happened. The Bible said there is no, there is one faith, one law, one baptism, and that baptism is a spiritual baptism. The body being washed, it is just only an illustration of the, uh, or to give a sign that something inside has happened. But it is that soul that, that is got to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. That is the eternal coming into the human nature and changing it around to make it a believer. I pray that they will receive the Holy Spirit. I commend them to you now as a trophy of the message and of the grace of Christ. In his name I pray, amen. Christ, uh, Brother Branham was speaking about the eternal coming. You know, people are fighting about comings and so and so. It is only one time that Christ comes in your life. And he comes through the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And the baptism of the Holy Ghost, it is a fire that comes and burns you in. You know, it prepares your place and Christ will come and dwell in it. You know, it is just a type of the eight, as the brother Bernard we just read here that the eight, the first, the first uh, two thousand years, you know, he 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 let the, the 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 flood come. That was type of the baptism, you know, the baptism of water. Then Jesus come and they give his blood. It was a type of uh, sanctification. You know, and the baptism, the fire of, of, of God that will fall, you know, that fire will burn the earth, 
before Jesus will come to sit on that earth, you know, before Jesus will come with his kingdom to sit, you know. So it is the same way that the body also is. We must also pass through the justification, sanctification, and the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Then Christ come and sit in your heart to, re to, to rule upon you and to lead you in the new life and to give you the peace. So he will be a king inside you, ruling you as a, as a child of God. You know, so that is the way we are. It is a justification, sanctification, and the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Then you have your eternal coming. Then you have a Christ coming in your life. When we speak about the first coming, second coming, those are dispensations. You know, the first coming, it was a dispensation of, uh, of the first coming that Jesus came to give his life. You know, and the second coming, it is a dispensation. But for the individual, you only receive Christ once. So stop fighting about it. whether two or three or four coming. It is not a problem to you. As long as Christ has come to you, you don't mind how, which, which coming are we living in. That is just a useless fighting. You can say, I'm in the second coming. I'm in the third coming. It does not change anything. As long as Christ lives in you, he already come to you. That is eternal coming to you. It is only one coming that you need in your life. When Christ comes and dwells in you, he said, I will go and come pick you to me. So that where I am, there you will be also. So if his class already come to me, if he already picked me up, I am where class is. If he is in the third coming, I am in third coming. If he is in the second coming, I am in the second coming. If he is in the fifth coming, I am in the fifth coming. So it is not a problem for dispensation to me. What matters to me is coming to me. Come, oh Lord Jesus, come to my heart. Let your kingdom come to my heart. When the kingdom of God comes to my heart, I am a changed person. I become a new creature. My life has changed. I am not living in this world anymore. Even though I am in the world, I'm not of this world anymore. Why? Because I'm living in another atmosphere. I'm living in another dimension of a heavenly dimension. Your life has changed. You are not of the hell anymore. You are not to do things like the world anymore. You know the things of the, this world become so dirty before you. Because why? There is a new life inside you. So that is where we are. Children of God, let us ask for the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is what? Brother Branham said, it comes like a, a, like a pyramid. And there is a capstone that falls from heaven. You know, he said, it is the kingdom of God. Daniel saw it as a, as a stone that uh, fall, you know, from that statue that, that, that fall from heaven without the help of any hand. And they break all the kingdoms of, of the earth. You know, and the brother said, that is Christ, you know. The coming of Christ in your heart. You know, he come and uh, run. When he come, he enter there. He breaks everything that is in you. He breaks every, any, uh, you, every, any, any ruling that is in you. You know, all the bad things that is ruling you, Christ will come and uh, break it down. And uh, he will establish his own kingdom in your heart. Then you will be a child of God. And what is that? Love. What is the capstone? Love. 
and that you will be in the kingdom of love. And that you have no hatred in your heart. You, have, you don't have to envy anyone. You don't have to trouble yourself about whatever. The only thing you know is you are living in the heavenly places. When the people speak about the politics, when the people about, speak about, oh, Obama has done like this, oh, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, oh, it's very good. You know, in, the, in this message, you can become everything you want to become. If you want to become a teacher of, of, of geography, you will find your part in the message. If you want to become a teacher of politics, you will find your part there. If you want to become a teacher of astronomy, you will find your part there. You know, but what matter is Christ in you? Do you have a Christ in you? Do you have the kingdom of God in your heart? If you have the kingdom of God in your heart, you don't even worry what is going to happen. You don't even worry when, is, when are they going to bomb the U.S. or when are they going to bomb, to bomb Vatican. You don't worry about that. Why? Because you are in Christ. Where Christ is, where you are. Where Christ goes, there you are. Where Christ moves, there you are. You are in the kingdom secure. You don't have to worry about the politics of this world. Stay with the word of God. The message did not come to make us politics, politicians. It did not come to make us an economist or whatever. It came to make us the children of God. It is back to make to make to you know to bring us to the kingdom of God. Amen. And the way Christ is, you know, brother Abraham say, Christ is the peace, Christ is the rest, Christ is the millennium, Christ is the kingdom. When he was speaking to the Pharisees, he said, You don't believe that? You, if you believe I come from God, then the kingdom of God is with you. Right. And you don't receive it. Christ was the kingdom. Yeah. He was the life. Yeah. Yeah. Reject the idea of just somewhere to go. If you will go there, glory to the Lord. We will be there, we will fly. Glory to the Lord. But first of all, that kingdom must be here. If you are not in the king, you don't have kingdom here, you are not in that kingdom, you are not going anywhere. Don't dream of flying somewhere. The kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God is in your heart. Then you will see how the life will change. Then you will see how you will be a happy man. How you will see a new song come in your heart. When the, when the trouble of the world comes, it cannot touch you. That's what Brother Banam said. When you have that love, there is no power that can overcome love. If we are powerless because we don't have love in us, when that love is in you, that is the third pull. Because nothing resists to it. To it, you see, when the life of the third pool coming in you, that is love coming. It overcomes, it takes possession, and then nothing of this world, you know, even the animal will obey you. And the people are saying, oh, let me, we are waiting one day, we will embrace lion. That power, Brother Bano said, just go somewhere. He said, if you don't have love now, you don't enter there. You know, it is that atmosphere of the sixth dimension. It must be in you. Then when it is in you, you handle everything. You put anything in control. Why? Because why? Because class is in you. It is class ruling. It is, the, it is Christ ruling the world through you. 
When you speak your word, your word becomes the word of Christ. And you say this mountain, go from here, go there. It obeys you. Why? It is not just you, but Christ through you. Speaking that word, you become the representation of Christ. You become the member, the body of Christ. You know, you, you become, you know, you are just a vessel, but Christ took your body to move himself on the earth. Amen. We say, Brother Branham, he was just, uh, you, know, you know, an example to us. But we all, we must have that life. The problem is our conception. What we think of we just dreaming of some day, but we forget that we must have that life right now. We need life. We need the kingship of God to rule us. We need the kingdom of God. It is always in your heart. It is there. And remember the promises of the end, the end time? You know, when God shall come, when in the end time, you know, what, 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 what was the promise of the, the, the Elijah to introduce yeah. the kingdom of God, to introduce Christ to the bride? That's what he came for. That's why God set him here, you know, to bring us that word, you know, that seven seal that was kept secret. It brings a life. It brings, a, a, you, know, you know, an atmosphere in, in us. It brings a new life. Amen. It's not just a knowledge of seven seals. Seven, I know. Thunders, I know. It's not just the knowledge. It is a life. Amen. And then when that life comes to you, you are changed, man. Amen. You don't stay the same anymore. Amen. So may the God bless you. Huh? Yeah. Let us stand up. Thy kingdom, O oh God. Amen. Let thy kingdom come. Amen. Let your spirit come. Come and change my life. I want to live in heavenly places. I don't want to be under the kingship of Satan. I don't want to be ruled by the Principles of this life, of this world. I need your kingship. I need your kingdom. I need your lead that will lead me to, to the true life. Heavenly Father, here we are before you, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. For this time and for this portion of the world, Lord, you wanted us to hear, to know today, Lord Jesus. We cannot do anything without you, Lord Jesus. We pray that you come and you break the part of our intellectual, the part of our theology, Lord, to bring your rulership in us, to bring your kingdom in our heart. To bring us to the heavenly places, Lord, where we can live, when we can have peace, we can have a rest, to rest in you, to, to rest from all the evil things of this world, to become a new creature, Lord. We are to you, Lord Jesus. We belong to you, Lord. As you taught us to pray, Lord, let your kingdom come and uh, let your will be done in it as it is done in heaven. Forgive us our trespasses, Lord Jesus. And lead us not to the temptation, Lord, but deliver us from the evil one. For time is the kingdom, the authority, the power, Lord. To you we surrender, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus, and lead us. I commit, O oh Lord, these people into your hand, Lord. I commit this church, Lord Jesus, into your hand. 
I commit our pastor, Lord Jesus, into your hand. We need you, Lord Jesus. Because without you, we cannot do anything, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the way you are using him, Lord Jesus, to handle us in this place, Lord Jesus. We pray that you continue, Lord, and that you fill him more, Lord Jesus, that we will not be, Lord Jesus, distracted by the things of this world, but we will be in, under your feet, Lord Jesus. You will be in, we will be in you, Lord, so that wherever you are, we are with you, Lord Jesus. Bless us, Lord, and bless every member of this church, Lord. Be with us in everything and uh, be the answer to all our needs, Lord Jesus. Amen. And uh, provide, Lord, all that we need according to your will. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Jesus be the Lord of Lord. Jesus be the Lord of all. The kingdoms of my heart. Habang naghihintay, uh, naghahanda ang ating babautismohan. Sa gabing ito, uh, we're very thankful na si uh, Sister Gloria Donceras ay magpapabautismo ngayon. Nanay po ni Brother Butch. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Sino bang mga anak ng Diyos ngayong gabi? Bahagi ng kaharihan. Yung ating narinig, we have just heard from, from the kingdom tonight. And our souls have been fed by kingdom food. Amen. With kingdom food. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yes, Lord. Praise God. Let's just sing it from our hearts. Amen. Pwede tayo mo po habang nahanda na ating mga kapatid. Jesus be the Lord of all. Oh, Jesus be the Lord of all. Jesus be the Lord of all. The kingdoms of my heart. Jesus, I surrender all. Let's just raise our hands. Jesus, I surrender all. May your kingdom come, Father. In this earth, in this body. Hallelujah. Enthroned, Father. Enthroned in our hearts. That's our prayer. We love you. God bless you, Brother Nemi. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Narito po si Sister Gloria Donceras. Siya po ay nagpasya ngayon ng magpabautismo sa pangalan nating Panginoong Jesus. Magbibigay po siya ng pahayag sa pagpapasya ito sa pagtanggap sa ating Panginoong Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Ako po ay nagpapasalamat po. Gusto ko pong bumalik sa Panginoon. Gusto ko pong iwanan ko po yung dati ko pong tinahat na mali. Akin po na pagpasyaan po na ako po babalik sa Panginoon, Jesus. Amen. Sana po, mapatawad niyo po ako sa lahat ng pagkakamali ko. Simula pa man. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Siras, yamang ipinahayag mo ang ating Panginoon at hindi mo ikinahiya at siya ay tinatanggap mo ng buong puso mo at pinagsisisihan ang lahat ng pagkakasala. Saksi ang buong iglesia ng Ilik Bride Assembly bilang lingkod ng Panginoon 
ay binabautismo kita ngayon sa pinakamataas at makapangyarihang pangalan Lord Jesus Christ. Kapatid, inanyayahan ko pong tayo magsama-samang manalangin para sa bako nating kapatid na hingi natin ngayon kasabay ng bautismo na ito sa tubig ay ipagkaloob ng Diyos ang bautismo sa Espiritu Santo. Hallelujah! Banal na aming Ama, makapangyarihan Diyos na mayari ng langit at lupa. Sa pangalan ng aming Panginoong Sus, kami po ay nagsama-samang dumadalangin para sa bago naming kapatid na kasabay ng bautismo na ito sa tubig ay aming hinihili ngayon ay bautismo mo siya ng banal na Espiritu sa iyong pangalan, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Congratulations. Lord of all, Jesus be the Lord of all, Jesus be the Lord of all, the kingdoms of my heart. Let's all stand, sing it. Oh, Jesus, I surrender all Jesus I surrender all Jesus I surrender all the kingdoms of my heart ang tanging para parang Harian ng Diyos ay may tatag sa inyong puso. Ay ang isuko nyo ang lahat sa Kanya. Ay ang inyong magkaroon siya ng pamamahala sa lahat ng aspeto ng inyong buhay. Walang anumang bagay na ipinagkakait, kundi lahat ay sinusuko sa Kanyang kamay. Now we understand why Christ, when He taught the church how to pray, He said, Pray first, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Dahil kung hindi muna darating ang kaharian ng Diyos sa ating puso, sa ating buhay, hindi natin malalaman kung anong dapat nating hilingin. Hindi natin malalaman ang kalooban ng Panginoon. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Kaya marami hanggang ngayon ay hindi alam ko anong kalooban ng Diyos sa kanilang buhay. Bakit? Kasi hindi pa nila tinatanggap ang kaharian ng Diyos sa kanilang puso. So anong dapat gawin? Anyayahan muna ang kaharian ng Diyos. At ang sabi ng ating Panginoon, ang sabi ng Biblia sa Romans chapter 14, verse 17, ang kaharian ng Diyos ay hindi pagkain o inumin, kundi katwiran, kagalakan, katwiran, kapayapaan at kagalakan saan? Sa Espiritu Santo. So ang kaharian ng Diyos ay ang Espiritu Santo niya. Kagaya ng sabi ni Brother David kanina, napakaganda, talaga ako ay napakain ng gusto. Amen. Ang, ang, ang kaharian ng Diyos ay darating sa inyo kapag nagganap yung eternal coming ng ating Panginoon sa pamagitan ng kanyang Espiritu. Amen. Na papasok sa inyong puso at magahari sa inyong buhay. And then, that's when the kingdom of God is come into your hearts. And then, ang sabi niya, pagka dumating na ang kingdom in this earth as it is in heaven, amen, then you can pray for what you need. Give us this day our daily bread. Amen. Pangalawa na lang yung daily bread. Importante yung kalooban muna ni Lord. Importante maghari muna siya sa ating puso. Amen. Maghanap ang kanyang kalooban sa ating puso. Amen. And then we can ask for our daily needs. Daily bread. Amen. Hallelujah. And then we can also forgive. Pag wala ang kaharian ng Diyos sa inyong puso, hindi kayo makapagpapatawad. Hindi kayo makapanalangin ng Panginoon, patawarin mo, pat, 
tawarin mo ako sa aking mga pagkakautang kung paano ako'y nagpapatawad sa mga nagkakautang sa akin. You cannot pray that without the kingdom of God coming to you first. Kaya sa gabing ito, yun ang, yun ang dapat natin ngayon. Kung meron ditong hindi pa nagbubukas ng kanilang puso para sa kaharian ng Diyos. Amen. At nais niyong uh, maintindihan yung mga pinagsasaluhan ng mga nakapasok na sa kaharian dito sa church na ito. Sometimes you wonder, ano kayang dahilan? Bakit ang saya-saya nila? Bakit nag sila? Bakit napapasigaw sila? Bakit napapaawit sila? Napapaluwa pa sila? Why? Because they've entered into a kingdom. Nag-iba na yung lingwahe nila, nag-iba na yung isip nila. Amen. At ang hari ay nangungusap sa kanilang puso, patungo sa kanilang kaluluwa. Hallelujah, what's that? Communing with them. Nagkakaintindihan sila sa pamagitan ng lingwahe ng Diyos na pinapadaan sa preacher. What's that? This is kingdom people. Only kingdom people understand the talk. Kaya kung gusto nyong, amen, maintindihan ang karian, buksan nyo ang inyong puso. Amen? Unless a man is born again, unless you be born again, ang sabi ng ating Panginoon, you cannot see, understand the kingdom of God. So you see? Praise the Lord. Hindi ko maintindihan ba rin anong kailangan kong gawin? Kailangan mo lang gawin? Buksan mo ang puso mo. Sampalatayan mo siya, tanggapin mo siya, sa kanyang salita ngayong gabi. Amen? And the kingdom starts there. The kingdom starts there. Siya na ang bahala sa iyo. Amen? Unti-unti ipapaunawa niya sa iyo kung ano bang ibig sabihin nitong mga bagay na ito. At ipapaalam niya sa iyo kung ano ang kanyang layunin sa inyong buhay. Amen? Ang kalooban niya ay maglilinaw sa iyo. Amen? At bago pa malaman, sabi nga, nasa millennium ka na. <laughs> bago pa malaman, nandun ka na sa great eternities. Amen? Because the kingdom of God doesn't come by observation. Amen? Hindi mo tinitignan lahat ng galaw mo at galaw ng mga tao sa paligid. Amen? When you believe Him, just believe Him. Amen? At ikaw ay magpaubaya sa Kanya. Ikaw ay Kanyang aakayan from glory to glory, from glory to glory. Justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Ghost. Bawa po malaman, nandun ka na sa great eternals, eternity. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Why? Because it doesn't come with observation. Just believing it and accepting it. Dear God, Panginoon, ano man ang laman ng mga anak, ng puso ng mga anak mo ngayong gabi, maraming dumating with burdens, with problems, marahil with sicknesses. Pero Lord, susundin namin ang turo mo sa amin. Kapag nanalangin kami, ganito muna ang aming sabihin. Hallowed be thy name. Lord, hatiin ka, Panginoon. Purihin ang iyong banal na pangalan. Kinikilala namin ang kabanalan ng iyong banal panganan. Hallowed be thy name, Lord. And then, thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. <laughs> oh, it's a very powerful statement, Lord. Madali lang po sambitin, pero kung makikita namin ang lalim, ang yaman, ang tindi ng ibig sabihin nito, ma. Kung makikita namin ang tunay na revelation ng mga katagang ito, eh may magagawa namin lubos na ipaubaya ang aming buhay. Al pag sinabi namin, Thy kingdom come, ito'y lubos na pagpapasakop sa iyong kalooban, sa iyong pag sa aming buhay, sa iyong, amen, walang hanggang layunin, Panginoon, sa buhay namin. Hindi man namin makuha yung gusto namin. Pag ang harian mo ay tunay na naitatag na sa aming puso, ang mahalaga sa amin ay ang kalooban mo na lang, Ama. Amen. At alam mo kung anong pinakamainam sa, atin, sa amin. Lord, we ask that you touch every sick person that's here. Lord, panahon po ng karamdaman ngayon. Daming mga kapatid namin nagsasuffer, Lord. Ah, panahon ng ubo, matinding ubo, matinding trangkaso. Pero Lord, anong makakatayo sa harap ng walang hanggang kaharian mo na ngayon ay nananahan sa gitna ng iyong mga anak? Lord Jesus, patunayan mo po ngayong gabi na ikaw na ang nagahari sa kalipunang ito. Bagamat kami, Lord, subject pa rin sa panahon by our bodies, Father. But we have been transferred, Father, into an eternal kingdom. We have been transferred into the kingdom of God. At doon nang gagaling ang aming resources, Lord. Doon nang gagaling ang aming tagumpay, Lord. Father, sa, sa lakas sa aming katawan, hindi namin kayang tapatan ang gawa ng kaaway. Sa aming human race, O oh God, na pinanggalingan o family, hindi namin kayang tapatan ang mga gawa ng kaaway. Ngunit hinaharap namin siya, Lord, mula sa kaharian mo na nagahari sa aming puso. 
Ang iyong mga pangako, salita mo, Panginoon, ay aming inaangkin at aming iniling na dumalo ito ngayon ama, patungo, palabas sa aming mga katawan at kung merong mga disorders sa aming katawan, may mikrobyo, may karamdaman, Lord, ang kaharian mong makapangirihan sa lahat, Lord, ay wasakin ang lahat ng gawang ito ng kahaway sa buhay ng iyong mga anak. Kung paano mong winasak ang kanyang Lord, dominion sa aming kaluluwa. Winasak ang kasalanan, Lord. Ngayon, Panginoon, pinahihirapan niya ang marami sa mga katawan ng mga anak mo na tinubos. Wasakin mo rin ang mga gawa niya sa katawan namin, Panginoon. Hallelujah! Para patunayan sa Kanya, ipaalam sa Kanya, ito'y anak ko, ito'y pag-aari ko, ito'y subject ko. Siya'y subject sa aking kaharian at kapangyarihan at siya'y aking binabantayan ng aking walang hanggang proteksyon. Oh God, let it be so now. Thank you, Lord, for the salvation, Lord, of our loved ones. Salamat po sa nanay, Panginoon, ni Brother Butch, na ngayon ay tumanggap. Salamat sa pagbubukas niya ng kanyang puso para manahan ang karihan mo sa kanya. Lord, umaasa kami. Lord, hindi lang po siya. Iba pang mga anak, magulang namin. Lord, na, Lord, mga anak mo na narito nagsisimba, pero mga ina nila, ama nila, hindi pa nakakilala sa iyo. Panginoon, nawa, makakita kami sa mga darating araw ng maraming mga ina at ama na hindi pa nakakilala sa iyo, na lumalapit sa iyo, ama, at binibigay ang kanilang buhay katulad ng ginawa ng aming kapatid ngayong gabi para ang kaharihan mo ay maghari sa kanilang buhay. We love you, Father. We just thank you for this fellowship. We love you. Kapo ang aming pinaparangalan, nasasalamatan ka sa tagumpay mo ngayong gabi. Salamat sa pagtugon sa lahat ng iba pang pangailangan. Hindi lang po karamdaman sa katawan. Meron po mas maralim na kailangan, Lord, ang iyong mga anak kesa dyan. Karamdaman sa Espiritu, sa pag-iisip, Lord, sa emosyon, Lord. Ano mang disorder, oh Lord, lalo na sa kaluluwa, Panginoon. Ayusin mo po lahat, Panginoon. Hari namin, nakilang hari namin, Oh God, maghari ka ng lubusan. Oh God, sa buhay ng iyong mga anak. As we surrender to you everything now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Amen. Magkamayan tayo. As we sing this song, there's a heavenly place in Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Hanggang sa susunod na gawain, ingatan kayo ng ating Panginoon. Hallelujah. Heaven. Above the world's confusion and strife, when I kneel in prayer, I get carried away to a heavenly place in Christ. Thank you, Father. Of this life, get you down. And it seems that there is no peace of mind to be found When I want to just run and hide I can always tell